Here in Baltimore, Maryland, these older adults are taking a unique series of tests. The tests measure energy expenditure, how much energy a person needs to perform certain tasks. The results let scientists know how people's energy needs change as they get older. The tests are a part of the Baltimore Longitudinal Study of Aging, or BLSA, a landmark study that seeks answers to some basic questions about aging. What is normal aging and how is aging different from disease? Dr. Luigi Ferrucci directs the BLSA. Purpose of the BLSA is truly to understand the different trajectories that characterize individuals over the aging process as separate from the occurrence of disease. Started in 1958 by Dr. Nathan Schock at the National Institutes of Health, the BLSA pioneered a new approach to the study of aging. Instead of comparing older people to younger people, it focused on evaluating the same people over time. It's the first time that somebody thought that in order to study aging, uh, it was just not enough to compare old to young people. And so the only way to really understand aging was to take an individual and follow up this individual over time. Participants ranging in age from their 20s to their 90s come to Baltimore every few years for a full physical exam and a variety of cognitive and physical tests. We pretty much cover the full component of you know, each, each physiologic system, but there's a, an emphasis on physical performance. And so many of the tests that we do are really focused on energy expenditure doing different tasks. The treadmill test measures how much energy a person is able to generate while functioning at peak capacity. During the test, they walk on a moving belt. Uh, if it's a female, at three miles per hour. If it's a male, it's three and a half miles an hour, if they're able to do that. The idea is to get them to their maximal peak heart rate, which is roughly 220 minus their age. The corridor walk is a test of walking efficiency and endurance. And what I'll have them do, the first part of the test is a walk for two and a half minutes, just at their normal walking pace. Then the second half of the test is the 400 meter, where we want them to walk as quickly as possible during that portion of the test. And we're timing how fast can they walk over 400 meters. Gait, which is how people use their limbs to move, is an important function in older adults. Here in the BLSA's Gait Lab, Researchers look at the individual components of walking and how they impact overall mobility. Okay, so we're going to do the gait test. I'm going to put 51 reflective markers all over you, head to toe. Um, this is really the longest part of the test. The walking goes pretty quickly. Finishing touch is four on your head. Does that feel okay? All right, and now you're set up. They are asked to do various tasks, like a, a normal walking pace, a fast walking pace, uh, walking over obstacles, and even walking with a cognitive challenge. The cameras pick up the signals from the sensors and send them to the computer screen. The computer shows the participants walking movements. After the test is completed, I take the results of the test, put them in another program to put bones on them, and then uh, calculate about 200 different variables from the test. The BLSA also includes tests for body equilibrium and body composition, such as the DEXA scan, which measures bone mineral density. All right, go ahead and sit in this chair. You can come around the front. Two tests which evaluate mobility and gait capacity include the strength test, measuring muscle strength in the thighs at slow and fast speeds. When you're ready, big kick out and big pull back. Good. And the proprioception test, which assesses how well a person can feel the positioning and movement of their feet and ankles. Match it. Brain aging is also an important focus of the BLSA. Researchers use magnetic resonance imaging and PET scans to understand how the brain changes with aging and how these changes may affect memory and other cognitive abilities in people as they age. Findings from such studies may lead to possible treatments for diseases such as Alzheimer's.
We know that the current treatments in people who have advanced Alzheimer's disease have not been effective. And so the idea is now to try to use brain imaging tools to go back to identify the earliest stages of disease when the treatments may be most effective. Data from the PLSA have been the basis for more than 800 scientific papers on aging. These publications have deepened our understanding of the relationship between aging and cardiovascular health, metabolism, psychology, and cognition. With older people an increasingly large segment of the population worldwide, it has become critical to understand what contributes to healthy aging. Why do some people remain resistant to disease well into their later years? To focus on this question, the BLSA has begun a new groundbreaking study with super-agers, volunteers 80 years and older who are healthy, vital, and disease-free. It's called the Ideal Study. The Ideal Study tried to bring into the BLSA a large number of people that have reached extreme longevity above the age of 80, but in spite of that, maintain an incredibly healthy physiology. They are affected by no disease, they're not taking any drug, they're physically and cognitively perfect, almost undistinguishable from somebody in their 20 or 30. What Nathan Schock set in motion more than 50 years ago continues to have great relevance today as the need to understand the processes and mechanisms of aging becomes even more important. So understanding aging and finding ways uh, to maintain our society living a high quality of life uh, in spite of the aging of the population, it's really, really an important issue. For more information about the BLSA and the ideal study, visit www.blsa.nih.gov.